So I received a note from Maddie, which read, reads, For the past year, I've noticed many of my close friends and family have a problem with being comfortable in being alone. I finally face the fact that I have that exact problem. I cannot be alone without thinking I'm going to get stuck in my house or fail to be the person I want to be in the new chapter of my life that I'm about to embark on. When I'm around friends or any person, really, I do feel content and happy. I do not want to live the rest of my life having to keep myself busy with people just so I may be happy and quiet the troubling thoughts that hang on my shoulders constantly. So I want to ask you, could you give me any tidbit of advice on how to be alone and be comfortable? Maddie. <laughs> I seem to gravitate towards questions that I can't answer. <laughs> I, uh, I also have trouble being alone. I mean, <laughs> technically not the actual being alone part. That's easy. You just be around none people. But I do have a lot of difficulty with the experience of being alone. And that's probably the first of it, is <clears throat> that I can get trapped into the idea that you're supposed to feel some particular way when you're alone. And if I don't feel that way, then I think I'm doing it wrong. I can feel when I'm alone, if I focus on it, uh, like there's some kind of weird tingling energy inside of me that wants me to stop being alone, <laughs> or at least not necessarily find other people, but I feel like I need to be engaged in an activity of some sort. It can be a gnawing feeling, like uh, almost like a pain, like, I don't know, desolation or something like that. And it comes on slowly like a whining noise and scratches on some inside part of me. And I tend to respond to it by just starting to do different things like go to the refrigerator or <laughs> check my emails or Facebook, but just kind of some sort of a repetitive pattern of self-soothing in different ways <clears throat> to get outside of that experience. But like you, I'm also aware that there is something in it, something important. I once uh, thought about doing um, a video blog that I was going to entitle the most relevant video blog to you ever. <laughs> and it was just gonna be like a 10 minute video blog where I asked you uh, to just sit there and experience what was going on in your mind and <laughs> in your body. Sort of like a conceptual thing, um, but in a way it's true, right? I think this is what meditation is, or at least the non-religious forms of meditation, the practice of being alone. And if you take out some of the goals from it, the how to do it right, anyways, it is the practice of being alone. And I think that's uh, pretty interesting. I tried it once, I was having a little bit of a difficult time. Uh, and <laughs> there's this resource, which is, I think uh, UCLA has a list of these guided meditations where you listen to them, uh, they're like little podcasts. And this one was called the loving kindness meditation. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. And uh, and it was crazy because the, the, the first thing that happens is they ask you to imagine something that would give you great joy uh, coming around a corner and feeling and experiencing that joy. And it sent me into the worst <laughs> depressive spiral because I couldn't imagine anything. It was a rough time. And I imagine prayer functions in this way too for some people. It's uh, some sort of a practice of being alone, but I kind of feel like it's cheating because I think that the whole premise is that you're not alone. But that's, I think, one of the keys to that experience of aloneness is whether you look at it uh, in opposition to being with people. And in that case, it would always be less than in some way. And I think that that is one difficulty that I have with aloneness is that I can't contemplate most facets of being without thinking about it in relation to other people, what other people think, what I'm going to appear like to other people. And so when I'm alone, I tend to gravitate towards things that are gonna advance my career or that I can ultimately just show to someone. And it's not very uh, focused just on me. So I am trying to do it 
a little bit more to be alone. And the way that I'm trying to do it is first to actually take some time to do it, five, 10 minutes or whatever. And then I just sort of sit there. And right now it's not very guided. Uh, I just kind of pay attention to, you know, the stuff that comes into my mind. And, um, and in that way I don't really feel alone because I'm often surprised like by the random thoughts that come in and then I kind of like follow them and if I feel a particular emotion I start asking myself why I'm feeling that emotion instead of trying to get away from it I try to I try to figure it out a little bit and I'm aware of how like empty and ridiculous that sounds in a way uh, <laughs> it's a terrible instruction manual but it is like a quest right I mean it's like probably the only true quest that you will ever go on because it's just you that's it and it's just a bizarre landscape that you're that you're in uh, and you know there's like crazy sort of exploration to do there and pretty fun wild discoveries one thing I will say is that uh, one inspiration for me even giving it a shot because uh, it is so much easier just to pace around and go to the refrigerator and watch television, uh, has been to read people like Thoreau or uh, Gilead is another great fictional book or Herman Hesse's Siddhartha and getting clues from people who seem to have managed some sort of aloneness that is contemplative, satisfying, and seems worthwhile. So many, <laughs> good question. I'm sorry that, I, that I'm so inexperienced on this one, and good luck with your quest. And now as a special treat, the animator Lee Hall is going to animate one of your dreams. I'm alone in a room in a citadel in the sky, and there are windows all around, and starlight turns through, but eventually the windows all shatter, and I find myself falling through one of them, and the stars, they wink at me as they pass by. And I plunge to the earth, and it's like a meteorite hit. I try and open my eyes, but I'm lying on my back from the impact, and I can't see. Any individual entity that pretends to understand the rules that guide this space is under an illusion. 